This week on Gadget, Multipath Wireless from Belkin. Welcome back to Gadget at the Techstop.net, where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balasser of the Society of Jesus. That's the California province of the Jesuits. We're a religious order of the Catholic Church. And we're here again in the Center for Apostolic Technology in Honolulu, Hawaii, on the campus of the University of Hawaii. Go Warriors! We want to start off today with a uh, little piece of geekware. We're kind of network-centric today, so I thought I'd bring out this for all the networking people out there. If you can understand this, if you know what this means and you're chuckling, well, then you are a geek and you need to go to ThinkGeek at www.thinkgeek.com to check out this shirt as well as uh, any of the other apparel that might express your geekhood proudly. The Bite of the Week comes to us from a company named Ami or Ami, I'm not exactly sure how to say it. It's the Drive Motion LED sign. Now this is designed to be adhered to your uh, rear windshield with a suction cup. And uh, the idea is rather than using hand gestures to express your emotion or something else that might spark off a road raid incident, you actually have the choice of five different emotions that you can display via the LEDs. As you can see, I'm cycling them through here. And uh, hopefully this will release enough pressure so that you don't get yourself into a situation that's dangerous. Now, uh, they also manufacture other units that actually spell out words, and you can imagine which words it might spell out. But they sent us the one with the emoticons. This is available right now online from Ami or from an online vendor like ThinkGeek for about $30. The main feature this week is Belkin's line of N1 wireless products. Now anyone who has not followed the 802.11n saga doesn't know that it's sort of a joke. I mean the standard has been pushed back so far, so long. It's gone through so many revisions that we have manufacturers out there that have been creating what are, are called pre-end devices. So their guess of what the final standard will be. And because they've done that we have all these proprietary pre-end standards. Well, that, this is not one of them. This is actually draft N, and it actually is upgradable. So when they finally do release later drafts of 802.11n and the final draft, you'll be able to upgrade this hardware. Belkin looks like they've done a pretty good job of designing them. They, they wanted to make these devices not just function well, but look nice, look decent. And they've done that. They've, uh, they've encased everything in this glossy black. They've made sure that it's aesthetically pleasing, and they've actually made them quite e easy to install. Now, these are all MIMO devices, M-I-M-O, that's multiple in, multiple out. If you were to go to a Circuit City or a Best Buy, you might see wireless devices with M-I-M-O on the box. Those are all what are called multi-path radios, whereas 802.11b or G, that's sort of like the radios you'd find in Starbucks, the hotspots, use a single path from the client to the router. MIMO can use aggregated paths, multiple radio paths, what they call the 40 megahertz mode to aggregate and, and get more bandwidth up to technically 300 megabits per second. Now that's all in the lab and that's theoretical and that's not real world but that's still quite a boost. We're going to start with the N1 wireless USB adapter. Now just as the name implies it's a wireless USB adapter. It's a little bit on the large size. As you can see here it's, it's uh, you know larger than my set of keys but everything for the radio and the electronics and the multiple antennas and the multiple radios is actually contained within this, this little device. The nice thing about this is that Belkin has included this little docking station and bridge which will allow you to plug this into the back of your desktop or the back of your laptop and then just have the device up front near your keyboard. This does two things. First, it lets you take the device when you need to go and maybe you want to plug it into a laptop that doesn't have a uh, end card installed into it. But it also puts the unit in a better position to receive signal. So a big problem with a lot of desktop cards has been that they, they put the antennas way in the back, behind the computer, behind the desk, behind a stack of papers, and what happens is you just you can't connect because you're blocking it, unless you put your computer in an odd angle. Well, now with this you won't have to. The other product, the other client that we received is the N1 wireless desktop card. Now this is a PCI card, so you'd plug this in and if you notice in the back, it's got these three antenna connectors, which are very easy to connect because it's a single barrel connector that plugs into all three. 
Now, once you uh, have that plugged in, you actually have this length of cable, which, just like the USB adapter, will allow you to set the antenna, and again, there's three of them for the uh, multiple in, multiple out radios, in any position where you would best get signal. Installation of both of these devices are, is very simple. If you've ever installed anything on your computer, you're not going to have a problem installing either of these devices. None of those mean anything without this. This is Belkin's N1 wireless router. This used to be their flagship until they released the Vision. As you can see, they've changed the front. They, they're very proud of this, actually. Instead of a row of LEDs that may or may not mean anything to someone looking at it, they have a series of icons that can be lit up. That way, someone gets a visual representation of, of what's happening with their network. Are they having a problem with LAN connectivity, connectivity to the internet, is the wireless not working? Now they can find out at a glance without having to be an uber geek. In the back you have your standard four ports, these are all 10100. We would like to have seen gigabit, but you know, this will do for home use. And uh, one port for the, uh, the WAN, the cable modem or the DSL. You've also got your standard power and your reset buttons and function buttons. Now, that's how it looks. The question is, how does it perform? Well, performance-wise, we were quite surprised. We were expecting this to be a lot like the pre-N devices that we've seen, and honestly, we just haven't been impressed with those. We ran iX Chariot, which is a, a high-end throughput tester. We found that we were pretty much getting line speed on the WAN to LAN uh, connections here. About 92 megabits per second, which is the 100 minus the, the overhead that you have for transmission. On the wireless side, when we were running in a pure N environment, in other words, we turned every other device off, turned off all the 802.11b, 802.11g, clients, radios, just 802.11n, we found that we were getting about 120 megabits per second, which, again, it's not the 300, but that's astonishing for 802.11 and draft. Uh, we found that in real world, when we started turning on B and G radios, we were getting closer to 72 megabits per second, which, again, isn't the 300, but it's far better than any of our B or G devices were getting alone. We also found that the real-world distance limitation was about 300 feet, which is a far cry from the 1400 feet in the specs, but that doesn't account for walls and mesh and the weird construction that we have in our office, in our house. We uh, also found uh, there's a weird thing that goes on with this, which is when you turn on the encryption, and this supports WPA, WPA2, and WEP, although you really shouldn't be using WEP, the throughput was cut pretty much in half. I mean, we saw it drop to about 30 megabits per second. We contacted Belkin about that, and they said it's because the uh, draft end that this is using doesn't support aggregation when encryption is turned on. Now, uh, supposedly that's going to be solved in later versions of the draft. There actually may be firmware out there that, that can fix that right now, but I, I didn't want to hack this around. I, I wanted to test it as it came from Belkin. As far as the feature set, this is where we kind of loved and hated the Belkin. This thing is simple, and it's designed for you to be able to put it into your network, out of the box, and get it working right away. However, we also found that that simplicity led to the lack in some features that we had come to expect. Things like logging or QoS, quality of service, you know, these simple features that we have found in other routers for so long seem to be absent from this. And I know that it's possible to put it in there because this is using the same hardware as some of those other products that do have those features built in. Also, the filtering. I mean, it does support a, a limited set of filtering so that you can turn on and off services at, at different times. But uh, there was only a handful of entries. I mean, if, if you were actually using this for a, a, you know, a Soho, a small office, a home office, you, you'd start to run out of the, the options that you could turn on to, to make it work for you. The question has always been with N, is it worth it to get this when I could just be using my B or my G? Now, previously, I'd always said no. I mean, it's just, it, why get something that's going to be obsolete? Why get something that you can't upgrade? Why get something that you're really not going to see any speed performance increases? Well, now I can say yes. Belkin's N-Line has proven that they kind of, they have an idea of where they want to bring their wireless products. And that makes me hopeful that uh, since this is draft N, they'll be upgrading it with the next draft and the final draft of N, which gives me confidence that I will see these performance benefits. I mean, it does, it is faster. And at this price point, there's no reason not to get it. At the moment, the USB adapter is available for about $80. The desktop adapter is available for about $75. And the router is available for about $100. So it's a tiny premium above 
high-end B and G equipment. If you're looking for a wireless setup, either your first one or if your old one is about to go dead, I would highly recommend that you take a look at Belkin's line. It's affordable, it's fast, it's dependable, and uh, you know, it's even a little bit geek chic. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about Belkin's N1 line of wireless products, you can go to www.thetechstop.net. Click on the Gadget tab and you'll be able to find links to where you can buy these products and uh, find full article reviews. If you want to send us an email, you can find us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology in Honolulu, Hawaii. And there's no Uber geek without you.